Another of the major mosquito-borne diseases is dengue fever. Uh, strangely enough, it's one that many people have never heard of before. It's a virus, and there are four different types of this virus. Uh, it's present throughout much of Asia, uh, present through the Americas, uh, and little pockets of it exist in East Africa. But primarily, it's Asia uh, that a vast majority of worldwide cases will occur. Dengue fever is carried by a mosquito that tends to feed during the daytime, whereas malaria is carried by, by a nighttime biter, this is a daytime biter. And humans are also its preferred food source. Now another thing about this, this mosquito is it's a domestic type of mosquito, that means it will quite happily live in your house, it will live in the garden, and it needs only a very small amount of water in order to breed. Now there are two types of dengue fever. There's standard dengue fever and hemorrhagic dengue fever. And uh, the difference being is a vast majority of cases will be standard dengue fever. Um, th thankfully, um, only a small number of uh, Westerners will develop this hemorrhagic type. Now, usually hemorrhagic dengue fever will lead on as a, are following a, a second infection I mentioned earlier on that there are four types of dengue fever. Now, if you have one type of dengue fever, that will normally mean that you're going to be immune to that particular type again in the future. But also what it means is your immune system is primed. And if you get any one of the other three types, it could mean that your immune response goes off the scale. And that's when hemorrhagic dengue fever often kicks in. Now, this particular pandemic, if you like, that we're involved in at the moment started uh, uh, just after the, the Second World War. started in Asia and spread out right across Asia, infected almost the whole of Asia, and from there on moved across into the Americas and East Africa through the increase in shipping and the ease of getting flights. Now, there are not as many cases of dengue fever per year as there are malaria, whereas I think malaria has uh, between three and 500 million dengue only has 100 million cases per year. Uh, and the vast majority of those will be standard dengue fever, but uh, up to several hundred thousand will progress onto this dengue hemorrhagic fever. Now, a lot of this would de depend on uh, your age, as children often get the hemorrhagic form, but also your history. And uh, the reason it depends on history is previous infection with a dengue virus. Standard symptoms of uh, dengue fever are just standard fever, very severe headache, um, joint and bone pain, and it's bone pain that goes on to give it its uh, colloquial name, which is break bone fever, uh, indicative of the amount of pain that uh, you get in the long bones and in your joints uh, following infection with dengue fever. You often also get rash, uh, and often quite serious uh, eye pain, which means it's very painful to move your eyes around. Uh, the dengue hemorrhagic fever, the first signs or symptoms you may get would be um, an increase in bruising. Um, this is really because the, the blood vessels become leaky and you start losing a lot of fluid through your peripheral blood vessels. This can lead to shock and this is what leads on to death. Now as it's a virus, there's no true treatment and no true cure. So the best thing to do is bite avoidance. Don't get bitten, you can't catch these mosquito-borne diseases. Uh, and also, there's nothing we can do before you go. Uh, it's all about, while you're away, reducing your number of bites, cover up, use good insect repellents.